Well, it was uh, definitely a, a sight to see. I was there when that uh, ruling uh, came out, and I saw that reaction, the uh, really uh, divided reaction between the cries of joy of those who supported uh, the ruling and uh, the anger of uh, those uh, who were pro-choice. And I uh, spoke to a few of uh, these uh, protesters, and uh, you really heard uh, two different visions of America and of uh, reproductive rights in the United States. Uh, the pro-life uh, protesters that I spoke to uh, hailing this as really a return uh, to a normal, a return to uh, what should have always been the case, an overturning of a, a ruling of a precedent uh, that should not have been there in the first place, and uh, the uh, upholding of uh, the right to life, as uh, they called it. For uh, the uh, pro-choice uh, group, it was uh, a day of disappointment, a day of anger, but also uh, I heard uh, a few people telling me that this was only the beginning, that now they could not trust uh, their elected officials, they could not trust the Supreme Court, and that uh, they were going to continue uh, fighting. There was even a woman, uh, an older woman, who was telling me that she was actually there uh, 50 years ago when uh, Roe v. Wade happened, and that she uh, was really shocked that 50 years later she was witnessing the overturning of uh, that landmark uh, ruling. So, uh, really, uh, two different faces of the United States, but also a very a political divide. I saw several representatives, both Democrats and Republicans, coming to speak uh, to their own groups. You had Marjorie Taylor Greene, a Republican, a staunch ally of former President Donald Trump, uh, taking a sort of victory lap to, uh, to claim that victory for the conservatives, and uh, several uh, Democratic representatives who came, who spoke about an overreach of uh, the Supreme uh, Court, and making this an issue for the midterm, saying that they need to vote in order to have majorities in the House and Senate, in order to make sure that at least uh, the states can protect the right to an abortion. I mean, Ketavan, when it comes to states, you know, how this is likely to play out in individual states uh, remains to be seen. There's, of course, the, the question of, you know, what happens with interstate kind of complications, if you will. Just walk us through uh, what this means for abortion access uh, for women in the U.S. concretely. Well, to make things uh, simple, uh, basically, you will have pretty much half of the United States where a woman will be able to get an abortion. And most of these states, often uh, Democratic states, are uh, working towards enshrining that uh, right to choose, whether it's in their constitutions or in their laws, or really expanding that access to abortion. And then in the other half, mostly Republican, conservative states, uh, you will see either an outright ban or a heavily restricted access uh, to abortion. In that report that you just played, there was a mention of uh, those so-called trigger laws, 13 states that have laws written specifically to snap into place, basically, almost as soon as a Roe v. Wade was overturned, which is now uh, the case. So those trigger laws are going to be uh, jumping into place in the, those states. And then you have about another dozen states who either had uh, laws uh, from before Roe v. Wade, before uh, the 70s, uh, that they will now be able to enforce without being challenged in the courts. And you have states that have uh, started uh, to push through some legislation that will heavily restrict access to abortion. Uh, some states uh, restricting it uh, as far as uh, less than six weeks, without exception for incest, without exceptions uh, for rape. So uh, really, almost a virtual a ban on abortions. And so that's what you're going to see, a divided states of America between uh, those who have access and those who don't. One other point that I would like to make is, uh, after reading through uh, this uh, decision, uh, the uh, Justice Clarence Thomas uh, said something, and there's a line that is very important, because this could not stop at just abortion. He said uh, that the court should take up and revise all the decisions that are based on the same legal argument as a Roe versus Wade, the due process clause, and that would mean challenging things like same-sex marriage, the right to have 
sexual intercourse with the person of the gender you choose, as well as a rights to contraception. So this is uh, the beginning for this very conservative court, if you take the word of Clarence Thomas, who wrote the opinion for this decision. All right, Keta Van Gogh, just on the uh, reporting for us from Washington. Thank you.